it's Sunday, September 26th, and the 18th Sunday after Pentecost in our church's calendar. St. Anne's and St. John's Episcopal Churches in Lowell welcome you to today's online service of morning prayer. The regularly scheduled services of Holy Eucharist in St. John's and St. Anne's are at the usual time now of 10 o'clock. Feel welcome to worship indoors with us at either church on Sunday mornings where we follow the diocesan safe church practices. Here on YouTube, we offer morning prayer worship every Sunday. Some of you are not able to come to church and others are hesitant to come to indoor worship because the pandemic is not over yet. Our online service comes mostly from the Episcopal Church's Book of Common Prayer and the intercessions and canticles that follow the lessons are from the Church of England's book, Daily Prayer. Please bring with you your joys and concerns for yourselves, for others, and for the world at large, the world in which we live, as we gather to worship God together this morning. If you have prayer books at home, our worship begins on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. This Sunday is Psalm 19, beginning at verse 7. <clears throat> the law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. <clears throat> more to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. 
Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sin. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God now and always. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families at all the entrances of their tents. And the Lord became very angry and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them? That you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. For if I have found favor in your sight, do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad. And the spirit rested on them they were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that Lord, the Lord would put his spirit on them. Here ends the reading. Our canticle is a song of Ezekiel. The spirit of God fills the whole world. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. A new heart I will give you, and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Our second reading for this Sunday is from the letter of James, chapter 5, beginning at verse 
13. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you in ill health? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. <coughs> the prayers of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and everyone who has committed sin will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again and the heavens gave rain and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save that sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord, Thanks be to God. The canticle is a song of redemption. <coughs> Excuse me. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Father has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. In him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off, for it is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. 
And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Here ends the Gospel reading. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. We're continuing today to look at the ninth chapter of Mark's Gospel, where it seems that many sayings of Jesus have been collected together for us. From Numbers, remember, two men remained in the camp, and the Spirit of the Lord rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to Joshua, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Well, did this passage from Numbers come to mind when you heard the exchange between John and Jesus at the beginning of today's Gospel reading? From John was the son of Zebedee, and this is the only time I think that it's recorded that John actually had something to say to Jesus that we know he said. He said, you know, but he said, you know, stop them because they weren't following us. They weren't one of our number. And Jesus said, don't stop him for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. The key is whoever is not against us is for us. Then Jesus says some things about stumbling blocks. And here I think it would help our understanding of what Jesus is saying if we look closely at the words Jesus is using. Jesus wasn't speaking English. He was probably speaking Aramaic, or these are recorded in Greek. So the words in those languages aren't identical to what we're hearing today. Remember that for most of the people to whom Jesus was speaking, the written word wasn't something that they, they knew. They didn't have books at home. The closest they came to books were the, were the scrolls of, of the books of Moses that would be in, in the synagogue. Jesus, knowing they weren't readers, spoke to them using images, pictures of things they were familiar with in their daily lives, so that what he said would stick in their minds. Some of these things are not familiar in our lives, but once we know what they are, what Jesus is saying, sticks in our minds too. A good example of this is stumbling block. It seems to be a way of describing a behavior, but it comes from a Greek word that describes an actual physical obstacle. Scandalon, something Jesus' listeners understood and could picture in their minds. It sounds awful like, like scandal or scandalous, and that's the same basic word that our words scandal come from. Jesus gives it a broader meaning, some behavior or word or that impedes someone from following the way of Jesus that would cause that person to sin. And then this wonderful graphic contra contrast is millstone. Millstones are huge and heavy. And he's using that to describe the effect of what really might happen for that behavior. Think of it, uh, tripping over something small, which keeps you from doing what you're doing or going where you're going, and then being subjected to pull down under the water where you can't breathe by this huge millstone. Think of it as tripping over a toy on the stairs, something you didn't see, you couldn't help, it didn't expect. It drew you away from what you were supposed to be doing. And then think about that wonderful image from cartoons of a huge safe coming down home 
and hitting somebody and wiping them out. See the difference between something small that can lead somebody astray and something large that might be the consequence of that action. Then Jesus' focus shifts from causing others to sin to our own sin sinful behaviors. What might cause us to sin? So he shifts to body parts, your body parts, to get you to think about what you do that leads you to sin. Not somebody else, as, as with the, the stumbling block, but what happens when you choose not to behave in the way of God. Less than whole, less than perfect, less than worthy, if you've lost a hand or a foot or an eye. And for Jewish people then, and possibly now, I don't really know, if you weren't physically whole, you couldn't participate wholly in the worship life of the community. The image of a loss of limb or sight meant loss of life. And to visualize losing that body part is scary and devastating because the behavior that you chose is what cut yourself off from being whole before God. And then Jesus says it's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Well, the word that we don't see in our scripture written is Gehenna. And Gehenna is a horribly smelly, smoldering garbage dump, dump that was at, in a gully just south and west of the old city of Jerusalem. And sometimes even bodies of crucified people were tossed there. Unclean, the stench was unbearable. And there are fires that do not go out. We lived two towns away at one point from Centralia, Pennsylvania, which had a fire in one of the coal seams underground that could not be quenched and kept advancing through the coal seam. People had to leave the town of Centralia because it was not safe to live there. And then you've seen the volcanic action in the Canary Islands and the great destruction that that kind of fire has wrought. These are things that are graphic and stick in our minds and remind us of what Jesus is saying. Why would you cling to a pot of gold or a behavior or a habit that is pulling you down to the bottom rather than let going of it? and rising up and breathing and living again. At what cost? Will you keep on behaving in a sinful way or abandon that behavior, that way of life, that attitude and live? Which is more important? Our choices now have eternal consequences. We need to hear what Jesus is saying. Dear God, may we share your mercy and pity with others as you have blessed our lives by showing us your mercy and pity. As you have shown us your love and forgiveness, may we share these, your gifts, with others. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The Collect for today. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And a prayer for Sunday. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And thanksgiving for diversity. O oh God, you have created all the people in your image. We thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives by an ever-widening circle of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hungry.
confidence before our Maker and our Redeemer. That God may bring in His kingdom with justice and mercy, let us pray to the Lord. That God may establish among the nations His scepter of righteousness, let us pray to the Lord that we may seek Christ in the scriptures and recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord that God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore all who are ill, and raise up all who have fallen, let us pray to the Lord. That the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and in the shadow of death, let us pray to the Lord. That all the saints in light and remembering Gloria and David, we may shine forth as lights for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> and now let us commend the world which Christ will judge to the mercy and protection of Almighty God and bring your intercessions and thanksgivings. Ace and Father, the coming of your kingdom, grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercy, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service, 
by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those whom you love and those for whom you pray, now and always. Amen.